The Abandoned Homes Project was intended to bring attention to the blight of these properties around the neighbourhood that have become dilapidated, dirty, overgrown and generally make a poor statement about the neighbourhood. This phase one was just designed to make them look brighter, attract some attention, help direct the neighbourhood's focus on these places where we need to bring some effort together, bring some resources together and try to just get those houses looking nice, fresh and ready for someone to live in. Originally this project was demonstrated to us at the Joseph um, Bringle Civic Engagement Showcase. There was a presenter there from I think Philadelphia and Patrice Duckett and I sat in on that workshop and we both said oh we want to do that, we want to do that in our neighborhoods. I took the learnings from her and convened a group of partners, Art with a Heart, the City of Indianapolis, Sherwin Williams, and the Bright House. Started the meetings and discussions about how, what resources we needed, what we had to do to get this project off the ground. As we got started, Art with the Heart really took ownership and leadership of this process and really ran with the project and made it something beautiful. Martindale Brightwood is, economically speaking, one of the more depressed neighborhoods in the city of Indianapolis. We moved to the neighborhood 18 months ago, and obviously we're very engaged in our local schools, but we also feel it's important to be visible and to have awareness among the community, and this has been a tremendous vehicle for us to achieve that. Last year was kind of when we started this project. Um, we had the idea to um, have children or invite everyone from the community to actually partake in painting these boards. We actually had a huge response. We spent all day in the gym and we painted more than, I believe, more than 50 boards. So it was a great opportunity and um, we got a little messy, but it was really fun. This is a piece that I made with the Abandoned Homes Project at Art with a Heart. It's just an abstract expressionist piece kind of inspired by Jackson Pollock. We had this giant board to do whatever we wanted to do with it, so this was the first thing that came to mind. Some of the boards we handed out to local artists and creative individuals, and that's one of them. I love this piece, I love the progression from, from the growth of the flower to the petal that becomes the bird, it's a, it's a very positive message and that'll wind up on a door somewhere. I personally believe that there's an artist inside of everybody. The paint day was a day for friends and families to come out. There's no right or wrong way to do things. It just flowed really well. And I think that people participated because they feel that everybody can do something to paint a project and, have, and see it later on a house in the neighborhood. Uh, it's very fulfilling. Uh, Art with the Heart got involved in saying that we like the students to take part, which we feel like that was the best thing because these high school students, they learn to give back into their community, they are doing services. When we go somewhere, you should see them, they will say, I did that and so and so did that. So they really had fun um, in describing that and telling others why they do doing that. The City of Indianapolis has been an important partner in this. Uh, the Land Bank owns each of these properties. They've helped us identify which of those are available, suitable for us to make these installations. Uh, we take a team, measure up the windows and the doors. If we need to, cut these boards to length, hopefully without uh, compromising the artistic work that's been put onto them. Uh, and then we, we install them. We, usually get some really good feedback really pretty quickly sometimes even while we're out there neighbors will come out and we've had some just really good positive comments about the whole project.
my sorority I found out about Art with a Heart and doing volunteering with them and so we decided to do a volunteer opportunity with my sisters. And we've been uh, drilling these boards onto the home. I've been holding drills and doing things I haven't done before so it was really cool. We're basically decorating abandoned homes, which is amazing because we're brightening up the community in which people will be walking by and they'll be able to see a lot of this um, beautiful artwork. I know some of the houses are really run down, so just seeing that people do care about the area and we want to make our city a little bit brighter is just a really nice thing to do for the city that we go to school in. And I think just people seeing people willing to go out and spend a day to do things like this for their community really inspire people to think that maybe I can do something to help too. Our goal for this place is the community taking care of their own community. Abandoned homes in a neighborhood bring crime. They get squatters. Um, there's a lot of broken glass around the area. Some of them have been badly burned in fires. After we paint that and you put the board, that keeps any intruder away. It brings safety. Because when we started here, it was like that. The area was bad. But now people will look at it, it just became beautiful. I think the project's been a great success in that initial phase of just raising awareness. We're hoping for subsequent phases where we start clearing up the properties and making them look more visually appealing. You, you put colourful boards like this on, onto a house and people look. It's leading to a broader conversation about how do we make them somebody's home and how do we bring people into these homes who will be an asset and a resource to their community. I would just like to see, you know, phase two go directly into revitalization and uh, home ownership and affordable housing. We don't necessarily want to publish a list of these homes and have a bunch of developers come in and buy them up and turn them over into houses that people that currently live in the neighborhood can't afford. So we're hoping to raise awareness and get community members to take ownership of the homes and grow the community in that way. How our future plans will look is that we're hoping to really get the community out and work on landscaping. So cleaning up broken glass that might be in the yard and trimming trees and, and really um, making it even more presentable you know, in the neighborhood. The potential that we see with this is one, it becomes attractive. It'll bring attention to the homes that are ready for redevelopment in Martindale Brightwood. Some need very little work, some need a great deal of work. I would like to see a two to five year plan, which is gonna take commitment. And I believe that the underserved demographic can be trained to make informed decisions. Uh, our program is going in that direction anyway. All of our partners are naturally going in that direction as well. The students need to feel like they're part of you know, the solution because that's the future. That's what makes any kind of sustainable project that we want. What makes it sustainable is the youth. Are they being involved? It's because the dialogue has already started. That is uh, pretty much is very encouraging what's coming up. The end goal or the vision is really to see um, people living in these homes and really restoring them and getting them back to, um, back to being part of, of the community. We're very keen to generate partnerships with anybody that wants to help see this blight removed from the neighborhood.